Welcome to this afternoon of music. My name is Carol Blankenship. I'm vice president for Nat's Artist Award. I'm so pleased to introduce this uh, recital featuring the 2012 Nat's Artist Award winner, Andrew Garland, baritone, assisted by Donna Lowy, pianist. You uh, have the program for this uh, wonderful offering of music. And in your conference booklet, you may find the complete biographical information for Andrew Garland on page 66, and biographical information for Donna Lowy on page 76. When you visit the exhibit hall today, tomorrow, please find your way to yesterday's music and look for the CD American Portrait by Andrew Garland and Donna Lowy. Please join me in welcoming Andrew Garland and Donna Lowy. Mates, I come to you today with an offer you might not be able to refuse. I have available a large furnished room on the first floor of a three-story walk-up in the heart of the East Village, 4th Street and 2nd Avenue. Bed, desk, wardrobe, and air conditioning come with the room. $550 includes all utilities. You may be wondering why the price is so low. Well, here's the twist. I'm 25 with a slight social problem, which to some makes me an undesirable roommate. <laughs> to put ice cubes down people's shirts. I have a compulsion to put ice cubes down people's shirts. Down people's shirts, down people's shirts. Ice cubes, ice cubes. I have a compulsion to put ice cubes down people's shirts. My roommate, you will likely bear the brunt of this problem. As my roommate, you will likely bear the brunt of the. You will likely bear the brunt of the. As my roommate, ice cubes down shirt. As my roommate, ice cubes down shirt. Explain why I do this, why I do this, why do I do this? It's a psychological issue, and years of therapy haven't helped. It's a psychological issue, and years of therapy haven't helped. Haven't helped, haven't helped. Therapy have not helped my compulsion to put ice cubes down people's shirts. Let me emphasize, it will not go further than the ice cubes. I am not abusive or perverted, and I will never make lewd comments or touch you inappropriately. <laughs> I do not drop heavy or hot objects down people's shirts only ice cubes what this means for you when you're sitting on the couch or at the table I may come up to you and put an ice cube down your shirt I may come up to you and put an ice cube down your shirt Ice cube, ice cube, I may put an ice cube down your shirt. Your 
bedroom door has a sturdy lock, so you'll be secure while sleeping. Ditto for the bathroom, so you'll be secure while... I may turn the doorknob, I may turn the doorknob, but a stern word is enough to send me on my way. I always have ice cubes on hand. Do not think you can simply get rid of all the ice trays in the apartment. All the ice trays, all the ice trays. Trust me, I have tried this as a various roommate. It doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I will only buy more. 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 On infrequent occasions, I have been known to follow someone onto the street to put an ice cube down their shirt. Once I showed up at a roommate's place of business. However, this was a wake-up call, and I can assure you, it's something I may not repeat. However, my roommate will have to be tolerant. It takes great patience, and others have failed. It may seem like a minor problem, but eventually, all of the ice can become somewhat annoying. <laughs> I think that covers it. <laughs> My current roommate is leaving to move in with her boyfriend. But before that, we had a successful relationship for one year. She even said the ice was a relief in the summer months, which can become quite hot. I have a compulsion to put ice cubes down people's shirts. I have a compulsion to put ice cubes down people's shirts. Down people's shirts, down people's shirts, ice cubes, ice cubes, ice cubes, ice cubes, ice cubes, down people's shirts, down people's shirts, ice cubes, down for coming and thank you all of you for coming too. We're glad you're here. I'm going to talk for about 90 seconds. So get to your seats as soon as you can. <laughs> Craigslist Leader is, as the title suggests, a cycle of song settings of Craigslist postings. Opera Scene concludes the cycle and it incorporates the theme from the opening song entitled You Looked Sexy, <laughs> thus making it a true song cycle. And now for something completely different. The Song of Sea Far in the Sweet Sea, when completed by Chinese Peruvian Jewish American composer Gabriela Lina Frank, will be an evening length cycle of songs for soprano, baritone, chorus, and an orchestra including Nicaraguan instruments. The poems of Pablo Antonio Cuadra follow Sea Far on his Odyssey from birth to death on the waters of Lake Nicaragua. Then, we have a song and a man who need no introduction, The Lordly Hudson by Ned Rohrer. Then it's the title song from one of our favorite cycles, I Was There by Lee Hoiby. Uh, I first performed the cycle with Maestro Hoiby in uh, 2001. 
on the Cincinnati College Conservatory campus, and I was prepared by none other than Donna Lowe.
It was our lordly Hudson, hardly flowing. It is our lordly Hudson, hardly flowing. He said, under the green grown cliffs, be still, heart. No one needs your passionate suffrage to select this glory. This is our lordly Hudson, hardly flowing under the green grown cliffs. Driver, as this appear in Europe or the East? No, no, he said. And has no peer in Europe or the East. This is a lordly Hudson, hardly flowing under the green grown cliffs, and has no peer in Europe.
by the way, the Nets for making so much water available. And we all know how important that is. From Walt Whitman, we move to another poet who wrote prolifically about the Civil War during the Civil War, Herman Melvin. And this next uh, song is from a colleague of mine at Brown University, Paul Phillips. This is a cycle of five Melville uh, battle pieces, and we will hear the opener of Reverie. Then the centerpiece of a deeply emotional cycle entitled Night, uh, loosely inspired by the Elie Wiesel book of the same title. That song is called Psalm, and it's by Jeffrey Wood.
Gentlemen, the composer of a battle pieces, Paul Phillips. I recommend all fifteen of the American folk set, all fifteen songs, to every singer and every teacher of singing, and there are a few of you in the audience today. <laughs> 10,000 Miles Away is a British song that was adopted by American sailors. And the Gallows Tree is an American folk song made famous by a little-known British group called Led Zeppelin. And a gallant bark for a stiff and a rattling breeze, a bully crew and a captain true to carry me o'er the seas. To carry me o'er the seas, my boys, to my true love. 
slack it for a while. I think I see my true love coming, riding many a mile. Oh, darling, have you brought me gold, or have you paid my fee? Have you come to see me hanging on the gallows tree? Yes, I have brought you gold. Yes, I have paid your fee. I have not come to see. small heads and women with small heads were everywhere in my hometown when I was six. Two men standing on the corner, small heads, small head, a woman leans to look in her mailbox, then there'd be some normal bodies, normal heads. Not everyone, in other words, in my hometown had small heads, but many did. Enough that I'd say to my mother, father, Why does that man have a small head? I was glad my parents' heads were normal size. They were glad I mostly didn't ask why a person with a small head had a small head with an earshot of that person. Apparently, these small heads did not appear so small to them. They had my eyes checked first. They took some x-rays of my skull. Did I have migraines? Did I have pinhead fears? Dreams. Perhaps it was the angle through the windshield glass. The local doctor leaning over me with his pen light probing my retina. His head was huge, and the hairs on the back of his head were crossed like swords. Nothing wrong with my eyes or my brain that he could tell. But the heads I swore were small were not. They were just your average heads, circa 1953. Just your average heads in America. Oh, the 
candle out and on the shelves not a lot and what there is a boiled potato in a bag a chicken carcass under foil looking dispirited drained mugged this is not a place to go in hope or hunger but just to the right of the middle of the middle door shelf on fire unlit from within red heart red sexual red wet neon red Exotic, aloof, slumming in such company, a jar of maraschino cherries, three quarters full, fiery globes like strippers. At a church social <laughs> Maraschino cherries Maraschino The only foreign word I knew <laughs> Not once did I see These cherries employed Not in a drink Or on top of a globe Of ice cream But just pop one in your mouth Not once the same jar there through an entire childhood of dull dinners. Bald meat, pocked peas, and see above, boiled potatoes. Maybe they came over from the old country, family heirloom. Or were status symbols bought with a piece of the first paycheck from a sweatshop which beat the pig farm in Bohemia. Handed down from my grandparents to my parents to be someday mine. Then my child. Ate one. It was because I knew it might be missed, or because I knew it would not be replaced, and because you do not eat that which rips your heart with joy. Composer, his now iconic opera, Dead Man Walking, has enjoyed two different productions in this summer festival season alone. And you will get to see him tomorrow, Jake Heggie. Yes. <laughs> then from there, from a beautiful song cycle called A Heartland Portrait, a song called An August Night. The poem of Ted Couser and the song of Stephen Paulus reveal the ominous dark side to a seemingly simple, beautiful, everyday situation. Monk, un 
I need to thank a few people. Thank you to Nats. Thank you, Alan Henderson, for helping bring me here. Thank you for you put a lot of work into this. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you to Maestro Paul Phillips. Thank you to my voice teacher, Penelope Beats Us, who is here. <laughs> And uh, thank you to Yesterday's Music for making the sheet music for virtually all of the songs you've heard today available, as well as the recordings, which happen to be made by us. <laughs> you, can, you can purchase their Yesterday's Music. And uh, last but not least, let's have a special round of applause for Donna Lowy. <laughs> When I first read through Monet's Water Lilies, I said, this is the song we've been looking for. And then when Tom Chapulo played for us for the first time, the transition into the final song of this cycle, I was blown away. And I never quite got over it. So now we're very happy to share with you the entire cycle, America 1968.
mute, shriek a bloody glass is praise. Sing wrathful, sing vengeful, sing hey no, hey no, hey no, hey no, hey no, hey no. Gigantic and laughing sniper on tower. I hate, I destroy, I am, I am, I am. Sing hey no, hey no, hey no, hey no, hey no, hey no. to the neighborhood her goodness and his wrongs wildly he crashes through elephant ears pleads in dusty city 
afraid of crippling fat her shoes and corners him. She strikes and strikes the shrilly circling boy till the stick breaks in her hand. His tears are rainy weather to like memories. My head gripped in bony vice of knees aligning struggle to wrench free